the final lecture in this section is going to focus on pronunciation, uh, which is also the final band descriptor category in the speaking band descriptors. And in this lecture, we're going to focus on recognizing weaknesses, targeting your problem spots, so we can turn those weaknesses into strengths. So let's talk about the importance of pronunciation. It's very important that you speak as clearly as possible in the speaking test. The clarity of your speech is basically what gives you your pronunciation score. High clarity, high score. Low clarity, low score. However, do bear in mind that you are not being tested on your accent. Your accent really should not have an impact on your score. So if you feel like you have a strong accent, don't worry too much, that shouldn't have an impact. But what will have an impact on your score? The pronunciation of individual sounds. That includes consonants and vowels. Word stress. Speed sentence stress, and intonation. These are all slightly different. Just a quick word on speed before we look at the focus of this lecture, which is the pronunciation of individual sounds. With speed, some people think that the faster you speak, the better your score will be, because it reflects um, a comfortable, confident command of English. But that is a flawed approach to the exam. If you speak too quickly, you risk your words being blurred and mumbled and unclear. In fact, you can hear right now that I'm speaking quite slowly, but you can tell that I'm a native speaker. And why do you think that is? Well, it's because I'm speaking with connected speech, and that's an important element of your pronunciation as well. So don't worry so much about your speed. Always prioritize clarity. Now, as I mentioned, the focus of this lecture, in terms of targeting weaknesses, is going to focus on the pronunciation of individual sounds. And if we get started by looking at some consonant issues, and we're going to focus on some of the most common errors that appear. As this is an express course, it would be impossible for us to focus on every single sound in English. Uh, we'd just be here all day. So I'm just going to focus on some of the most common ones that appear uh, from the students that I teach. Now, before we begin, I want to give you a couple of pieces of advice, and I want you to follow these through. With all the sounds we look at, I want you to exaggerate these sounds, like I'm doing here, exaggerate the sounds. That may not feel so natural at the beginning, but if you struggle with particular sounds, exaggerate them to begin with, then over time they will soften and become a bit more natural. Pronounce very slowly. Now this is not what I recommend doing in the exam. Speak slowly, don't pronounce slowly, but pronounce slowly here so that you can really get a feel of how your facial muscles are working when you pronounce these sounds. And hand in hand with that goes this advice here. Notice the changes in the tension of your muscles, the mouth shape, the tongue position, and etc. And make sure to give your jaw a massage when it's over. It can uh, cause a little bit of uh, pain in the, in the jaw area. So yeah, give yourself a massage too. Right, let's get started. We're gonna think about the th sound first of all. Um, now, you'll know if you have an issue with this or not. If you don't, don't worry about this too much. But a lot of people have the problem of not being able to pronounce thing, thief, or both correctly. This is an unvoiced sound. The most common mispronunciation here is to pronounce this sound as a d or a t, like ting or ding for thing, bat or bad for bath, or dif or tif for thief. The trick here is in the positioning of your tongue and how you use your breath. Now, what I want you to do is stick your tongue far out of your mouth, put it all the way out, like you're um, sticking your tongue out at someone. 
Now hold your tongue between your teeth. Now breathe through your teeth, which are clamping down on your tongue. This should be creating right now the unvoiced th sound. Now say the word thank you and say it a couple of times. Thank you. So what you should notice is the tongue is far out, it's clamped between teeth and the breath is coming through the teeth. Thank you. Now this is often confused with uh, this sound here, the voiced th sound, which appears in words like those, there and although. Because it's voiced, this means you should feel some vibration in your throat. The same problems with D and T sounds often appear when people attempt this sound. Instead of sticking your tongue far out for this one, try sticking it out just a little bit, and then imagine the sound of a buzzing bee. This will help you to vibrate your tongue. And now say the word there. So what you should notice is that the tongue is just a little bit out of the mouth, but still between the teeth, but not clamped quite so hard because you need that room for vibration. And then think of the buzzing bee and you'll have that th sound. And we'll say the word there. Now, let's try this tongue twister. First of all, try it on your own, see if you can get it. And now listen to me say it here. Although they thought of these things here, they gathered both of those things there. It's quite a lot of voiced th in that tongue twister, but also a couple of unvoiced ths. Okay, let's move on. Another very common issue is the l sound that appears in words like long and light and belly. And you may already know who I'm talking about here. This usually occurs for East Asian speakers as there is often no distinction between the sound L, L, and the sound R or R uh, that we're going to look at below. Now to make the L sound, you need to press the tip of your tongue against the roof of your mouth. So just behind the teeth, but not on the teeth, but on the roof of your mouth. Push air through your mouth and then flick the tip of your tongue forward. Now your lips should not be moving at all as you produce this sound, so try to keep them stationary. Try the word click, click, and as I mentioned there, pronounce it very slowly and try to exaggerate it. It should not sound like crick, but click. You can hear that flicking of the tongue on the top of the mouth there, click, click, okay? Now the other sound, of course, is the r sound in words like wrong, right, and berry, in contrast to long, light, and belly. So that's why I've chosen those words there. Now to make this sound, you need to keep the tip of your tongue down, not up, like it would be for the l sound. And your tongue should not be touching anything. So with the l sound, the tongue touches the roof of the mouth. With the r sound, the tongue should not touch anything. Press the mid slash back of your tongue against the insides of the top teeth. So I guess the tongue is touching something, but don't touch the tip of your tongue against anything. But yes, the mid or back of your tongue should kind of uh, round up against the insides of your top teeth. Now, round your lips. Think of the word round. The word round begins with a round lip shape. So the round your lips there and then push air through your mouth. So tip of the tongue, not touching anything. Middle back of the tongue up against the insides of the top teeth. Round your lips and then you and then say the word round, round, round. Okay, tongue twister here. This one's very repetitive, but it's incredibly difficult even for native speakers. Okay, but the more you practice this, the better you'll get at these sounds. 
Red lorry, yellow lorry. Red lorry, yellow lorry. Red lorry, yellow lorry. I surprised myself and uh, I worked it out. But um, the more that you do this, the more likely you'll make a mistake. But just keep doing as many repetitions as you can. Okay, final consonant sound issue here, common one, is the w sound. This is the w sound in words like west, worse, and rowing. This pronunciation feature is often difficult for German, Eastern European, uh, Indian speakers, Turkish sometimes, um, and commonly confused with the v sound, which we're going to look at in a moment. Now with this sound, you need to shape your lips into a kissing gesture. And don't worry, there are other Udemy courses to teach you those kind of skills. I'm just teaching you here how to pronounce this sound. So the trick here is to push air through your mouth while making this kissing gesture. Sounds simple enough, but a lot of people get this confused. Now make sure that your top teeth are not touching your bottom lip. In fact, make sure your top teeth are not really touching anything. So lips in a kissing gesture, top teeth away from bottom uh, lip, and say the word weird, weird. If it sounds like weird, then you're doing it wrong and you need to take your top teeth away. So weird, weird, weird. Now if we look at the V sound. This is the sound that appears in words like um, instead of west, we have vest. Instead of worse, it's verse. And instead of rowing, it's roving. So let's have a look at how we make this sound. As I say, this is sound is often confused with the worst sound, but the trick here is simply to stick your front teeth out over your bottom lip, like Bugs Bunny. If you imagine Bugs Bunny, you can imagine those front teeth coming down over the bottom lip there. Then breathe through your mouth with your teeth in this position and say the word very, very. Again, exaggerate this. Stick your teeth out really far over the, um, over the front of your bottom lip and this should make it a very easy sound. There is no need to purse your lips here. You can, you can come away from that kissing gesture. Very. The tongue twister here, have a go. I'll show you how it's done. She had very weird vicious wishes that the worst would happen to the versed men. These very weird vicious wishes made the versed men very wary that the worst would happen. Okay, that's a tricky one even for me, so have a go with that one. Now, having looked at some consonants, let's uh, just have one brief look at a common issue that comes up with vowels, because uh, this is an issue which sometimes gets people into trouble um, depending on the word that they pick. So, the first sound here, this little symbol, is for the E sound, which ap appears in words like beat, sheep, reach, and beach. So, how do we make this sound? To make this sound, you need to put on your widest smile. So make a really wide smile. It doesn't have to be a genuine smile. Sometimes a fake smile even works better here because essentially we need to tense our facial muscles. So it's not a weak yearbook photo smile, hardly anything there, but a wide and cheesy grin. So tense these facial muscles, pull the lips as wide as you can and say the word cheese. So tense those muscles, cheese, 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 okay? A good way to check if you're getting this right is to place your finger under your chin. You'll feel the muscles there tense up if you're pronouncing this correctly. If you're pronouncing it like chis, then you won't feel those muscles. And that's the sound that we're gonna look at here, the i sound in words like bit instead of beat, ship instead of sheep, and rich instead of reach and let's have a look at how we create that sound. So relax, relax. You can release the tension in your facial muscles, open your mouth just slightly, only needs to be a little bit, and place the tip of your tongue behind your bottom teeth. And now say the word, win, win. And you are now winning at speaking. Winning at speaking, so you can practice that there. Final tongue twister. Strict vegans eat beet chips with bean dip and keep meat and fish dishes out of reach. Try 
saying that tongue twister with your finger under your chin and notice where the tensions uh, arise and where they do not. Right, now in terms of moving forward, pronunciation is an essential part of your score in IELTS speaking. So it's vital that you acknowledge and recognize your weaknesses and turn them into strengths. I can't do that for you. I can't do that from where I'm sitting unless you choose to take some lessons with me, of course, or uh, one of the teachers on the IELTS teacher. So to help you with recognizing your weaknesses, record yourself speaking for one minute, you know, even if you just read an extract from a book, and then pass this recording to either an English teacher who's willing to help you uh, or a native friend or an acquaintance and ask them to point out to you any pronunciation difficulties that you have. And once you are armed with that knowledge and you have identified your weak spots, you can use these tools to help you to improve in these areas. The first one is a pronunciation app from the education group Macmillan, and the app is called Sounds. Uh, it was uh, developed with um, one of the experts on English pronunciation, and I can tell you that it's a, in a very, very good app if you struggle with pronunciation in particular. YouTube's also a great way to practice pronunciation. Lots of videos on there that, that will show you the, uh, the facial muscles moving, the movement of the mouth and so forth, and you can try and copy those sounds. And personal tuition, pronunciation coaching. This is of course the best way to go if you can do it, um, but you can still make huge strides forward in your pronunciation even without this extra element of pronunciation practice.